Thy designs for 3D printing could be a whole lot better, but you've got to keep in mind the lesson of these three letters. 3D print a letter Y. It'll be fine for a little while, but what happens when that Y starts branching out, when the new layers being put down are actually bigger than the layers that are going down below them? Is this print going to succeed? Is it going to fail? Or is it going to maybe partially succeed, partially fail? You know, go ahead and take your guess and put it in the comment section of the last video that you viewed, but with no context whatsoever. And then come back here and let's find out what happens. You bet this succeeded, because even though the new layers going down are just a little bit bigger, there's enough of the previous layer for the new layer to gain purchase on that it doesn't fail. It prints just fine. This is a design principle called overhang. It defines that if you go out just a little bit, and generally speaking about 45 degrees from the level is your safe zone, that your print will most likely succeed. Okay, now print a letter H. Again, it'll be fine for a little while, but what happens when it has to bridge across from one leg of the H to the other? Is it gonna succeed? Is it gonna fail? Is it gonna kinda succeed, kinda fail? This one succeeds. The principle of bridging in design says that as long as you're giving the plastic somewhere else to latch onto on the other side of your print, that it will likely succeed. And this is partially because when 3D printing, plastic isn't fully liquid when it's melted, it's just soft, but it still has tension and it's only putting out enough to go from one end to the other. And so bridging works. Now let's print a letter T and let's print a serif letter T. What's going to happen when it gets to those serifs to parts that have nothing underneath them when they print? Obviously this one failed and it's actually not failing as bad as I wanted. Whoa, okay. The failures in this case, yes, they're bad and, and we lost part of the print, but they actually provided a bed for the rest of the print to print on. I did not see that coming. I guess in this case, the letter T stands for tenacious. But generally speaking, when you print something that has large overhangs that have nothing underneath them, it's going to fail. Now, how could you get it to succeed? Supports? No. No, the whole point of this is to make prints that don't need supports. No. What if you took this letter T and flipped it upside down, printing it on its head? Then it will print just fine and won't need any of those darn supports. This teaches a principle of orientation, that you do not need to 3D print something the same direction that it's going to be used, that you can in fact put it any way that makes sense. And of course, at this point, the entire conversation becomes entirely academic because somebody will point out, why don't you just take the letters and lay them down? Then they'll all print. That's not the point, okay? Every manufacturing process has its limitations and 3D printing is no exception. Some people will point out that the limitations of 3D printing are a lot less limiting than other manufacturing processes. And, and that's true. 3D printing is capable of doing amazing, amazing things. And it can even do prints that, you know, you put a little bit of supports on there and get good at supports and you can print anything. But I think knowing how the 3D print process works, thinking in those deposition layers and thinking of the limitations of those and designing for prints that don't need supports will ensure that your print succeeds much more often. Yes, supports can fix things, but at the same time, supports 
are a point of failure in your print. And if you're designing for 3D printing, minimizing or even eliminating those supports can make your designs much better for the people who are going to be 3D printing them. Now, when I talked about the letter Y, I said the safe zone is that 45 degrees off the level, but does that mean that you could never push it more than that? Well, of course you can, and, and I encourage you, these rules are not hard and fast things. What they are are guidelines to get you started in 3D print design. I've seen people, depending on the material and the ambient temperature of the room and the layer heights that they're printing at, I've seen them push those overhangs to 80 degrees or more, which is remarkable. But if you're making a design for somebody else, staying within that 45 degree range will ensure that regardless of their printer and how they've got it configured, that they'll have a good experience with your design. If you push it more than that, keep it to an absolute minimum. Same with bridging. I've seen people who have taken their bridges and stretched them out to 10 centimeters or more, and it's a remarkable feat of 3D printing. I've also seen bigger bridges that fail. Maybe they're printing with PLA, but it's too hot and it sags as it's printing. But then the second layer that goes on top of that kind of uses that as a, as a suspension and a support material, and it succeeds, kind of like we saw happen with that Serif T. And so, yeah, stretching your bridging might be okay, but generally speaking, you want to keep your bridges as short as possible, as short as you need them to get the job done. Well, I hope that this helps, and I am planning on doing a lot more of these educational design 3D print lessons, especially in Blender. So if you want to see more of that, keep an eye on this channel and do all the things that you're supposed to if the channel is that you like. But I'm not going to enumerate those. You know what they are. But until then, I want to thank you very much for watching. I want to remind you safety first and that I have all sorts of social links down in the comments. And also, there's going to be a playlist here of these sort of videos that you can watch. But remember, until I see you again, safety first. I'll see you next time.